20 minutes after 8 and you're watching the AM show here on your Joy News channel on Multi TV. Time now for us to do AM talk. And uh, in a bit, I'll be telling about my guests in the studio and the kind of things we'll be discussing this morning. But as usual, you know that uh, AM Talk is probably brought to you in association with Diamond Diagnosis Center. And it is your ultra modern diagnosis center specialized in the treatment of fibroid. Our competent and well trained staff will ensure that you undergo the treatment of fibroid without any operation under uh, hygienic conditions and the application of modern technologies in our practice. We are located at Opongulo Junction in Accra and TUC in Kumasi. Call us on 0243-176-119 or 020-751-5623 or you could also reach us on 0273-327054. Diamond Diagnosis Center, we treat fibroid without any operation. So, time now for me to introduce my guest in the studio this morning for AM Talk. And joining me now is Member of Parliament for Bantama, Henry Kwabna Kokofu. He's uh, on the Land and Forestry and Standing Committees of Parliament. Uh, a bit later on, uh, Mr. George Lowe, who is the Not Die Member of Parliament, will also be joining this very conversation. But let me start off with uh, uh, Honorable Kwabna Kokofu, who is now here with me in the studio. Honorable, good morning. Many thanks for joining us. Eh? Good morning. You. So time to uh, <coughs> delve into quite a number of issues, but this morning my pick has to do with your party, the NPP, uh, particularly your director of elections suggesting that the NPP is going to go ahead and declare this year's results. I mean, that's not your job, is it? Yeah, let me say good morning to your Charles viewers mm. uh, once again, and greetings from Nanado Danko Kufado, far away from Europe. Um, I listened to my director of elections, I have spoken to him, and that is not the import of what is purport uh, to have been put out there. Mm -hmm. Indeed, he touched on the elections and the coalition and declaration of the elections. What he really meant, on what we do um, uh, clearly understand, is that elections are won at the polling stations. And indeed, elections are declared at the polling stations. Are they not? They are declared at the polling stations. This time around, it is not only the declaration forms at the polling stations being given out there, but there will be a board. There will be a board. Suggestions have been made that full to the full glare of the public. So we will do the tally down there. We move to the coalition centers and do the tally there too. You're getting me. So at that, at the stage at the polling station, we will know the results. Getting to the, um, um, the constituency coalition center, we will do the tally and we will know the results. And then we move on to the regional, the regional EC office, where all the constituency elections will be tallied there again. There, too, we will do um, the tally and it will be displayed. Before, and we will know the results there before they will be carried on to the national level. So by the time they get there, we would have. In our parallel uh, collation line, collated all the results, and we will be in the position to know what the people of Ghana have said. We doing this to avoid a situation where somebody is sitting somewhere, be he uh, or her an electoral officer or uh, an, an, um, security officer or what, trying to intimidate and trying to massage figures so at the blind side of. All of us. And indeed, these things are not going to happen to New Patriotic Party alone. We expect that all other political parties, including the ruling NDC, will have their own way, power way of uh, collating the results. So we can all compare and contrast. Where there is a difference, then we draw the attention of the EC to that effect. So, um, and basically, this is a harmless <laughs> within the confines of the law. We will set up our power collation table or if you like apparatus, to track the results from the polling station down to the collation center, up to the regional collation center. We have two collation centers. We will have the constituency collation center, and we will have the regional collation center before it gets to the national, for the EC to do the declaration. We all know, everybody knows, it is within the, uh, the, the, the ambience of the EC to uh, uh, call the elections. We all know. But what we're saying is that we would have by the time EC makes the declaration, we would have also gone through the line ahead of time to have our, our results uh, intact. 
So at that point, nobody, nobody will attempt or will have the, um, uh, the, the, the chance to, to, to massage figures and then uh, change what the people have said. So, so you strongly believe these new measures your party is putting in place is going to ensure that uh, you can essentially be sure that no one can cheat in this year's elections? Yes, of course. Uh, in, in, any, in anything, uh, you cannot, um, you may aim at uh, zero happenings, mm. but then uh, the, the, the main target is reducing to the barest minimum whatever uh, 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 negative plans that one may have in place. We would love to stop it and stop it once and but for all. But the parties, you do accuse yourselves. You accuse the NDC, the NDC accuses you of the same practice. So we, we put measures in place, or we are putting measures in place to ensure sanity. And I've told you, it is not incumbent on uh, New Patriotic Party alone. CPP has the right to do their own, uh, uh, PPP, NDC, setting up your parallel coalition line to make sure you track every step of EC's coalition system. It's, it's, it's no offense, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not a prerogative of any, any other uh, single political party. So our director of um, elections is dropping the hint that this time round, we all agree, elections are won at the polling station, so we will be there. Mm -hmm. We will not leave the situation where only leaflets are given out to uh, agents only for another person or somebody somewhere to go and write uh, 270 and then massage figures. No, you collect that one and you have them on the screen for everybody at the polling station to know. And our collation line at, right from the polling station will track those figures up to the constituency collation center, do same, and be sure that it is in the full, full glare of the public. Mm. Then we move on to the regional collation center. Ashanti region, we have 47 constituencies, and we do expect that all the collated results of 47 constituencies will be there at the regional center, so we can all, at that point, scrutinize and make sure they, they, they are intact. I mean, there's mm. nothing, there's no nothing. altercations or anything, okay. before they are transmitted to the national. We have barely five months to the general elections. Mm. Uh, one would say that the AC has gone through a lot, well, they are sticking to their timetable, they have done a few things this very season. Would you say you are impressed with how the Electoral Commission has conducted itself over the past few months, for instance, as regards the issue of uh, registration of uh, new persons and all? Uh, how would you assess the performance of the EC, particularly in this election year? And going into the election in itself, how do you see things panning out? I see nothing different from the general public or the AC. There have been a public outcry from the clergy, from whatever sectors, from the civil society organizations, and indeed from we the political operators. I am personally not happy, and lots of Ghanaians are not happy. Just recently, we have key uh, uh, eminent clergy people coming out, imploring on the EC to do what is right, try to see reasons to the demands of the people, particularly with the Supreme Court uh, ruling mm -hmm. on, on several issues. The EC, as it were, is hiding behind the, the um, independent sort of uh, uh, thing and trying to do what it pleases it. You have an EC who has a huge task of uh, conducting these elections, and they think the priority is to have a new logo. We're talking about voter register being bloated. Each and every one of us, all the stakeholders, we do agree from the civil society organizations up to the political party of protest, including the EC itself, do agree that we have an electoral register that is bloated on our hands, and that we have minors on the register, we have foreigners on the register, we have people with multiple uh, registration on the register, and we do have diseased persons on the register. And for that matter, it does not make the register wholesome. What do we do about it? We, from our point of view, have advocated for a new register altogether. The EC flatly refuses, engages a panel of eminent people to work on this. The results, uh, the, the, the recommendations of uh, this committee is, 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 is pushed aside. EC once again coming, no other person or institution or any other body can 
force the EC to do whatever. So what was the rationale putting the, the, uh, the, the panel together? The EC tells us that the uh, panel did not in any way suggest the validation the NPP is speaking of. We all read it. It's there. The, you, you in the media, you know. These are black and white. I mean, it's pure English, and everybody has read it. So they can go ahead ahead. Even the, even the Supreme Court ruling, the EC has its own interpretation. Only for an imminent jurist to come out in his own private capacity to expatiate on, on, on the ruling. We still have these things on our hands. And the EC does not seem to be sensitive enough to the plight, uh, I mean, the, the, the plight of the people when it comes to this uh, 2016 electioneering process. People are just wide awake and they want to see pragmatic efforts being put in place by the EC. We've been talking about peace and all kinds of things. Yes, we do have peace and all that. But peace has always been the byproduct of justice, being fair and just to one another. Elections has the potential of uh, uh, exploding in mm -hmm. any other people's face, no matter how uh, uh, hard you will be or no matter how peaceful you want to be. We were at the Supreme Court in the middle of um, the 2013 petition and at Kwewu East or West, you might, you, 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 um, your, your, your producers must uh, may, may, may update me, mm -hmm. Kwewu East or West, District Assembly elections, mm -hmm. and there was electoral fraud going on there, stealing, daylight robbery. Electoral assembly members voting on a DC, a government appointee, and 33 or so uh, assembly members uh, engaging in, in, in elections. And they pulled down the ballot papers, and lo and behold, it was w well over about three. But, but does, the, does the MPP have fears the Electoral Commission may put up such a behavior that may affect the fortunes of your party in this year's general elections? The fortunes of the peace of the, of, of the people of Ghana. You may cheat New Patriotic Party, you may cheat uh, uh, PPP, you may cheat CPP, you may cheat NDC, but you are cheating the, the conscience of the people. Is that, the, is that what the party believes? Exactly. That, that the, the EC is trying to cheat the MPP? What I'm saying, the EC may try to cheat MPP. Mm. It may try to cheat CPP. It may try to cheat NDC. But eventually, is the eventually it is the people of Ghana that you are cheating. The people want to exercise their franchise. The people want to give their mandate to be the kind of political party and leadership that they themselves have come up with. You do not sit somewhere in your office and think, that you have the right to change the, 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 the mindset of the people of Ghana. You go into, as it were, protect this ballot, every one of them, from one ballot to up to whatever, six million of the ballots that you're going to count. You're going to make sure we police it and check every bit of that. And that is the hint that is being given. One, one, one right. would say that the NPP is trying to bully the Electoral Commission into doing anything and everything the NPP wants because there have been series of uh, events and quite a number of things that the party has come up with seeking to suggest that virtually anything and everything the AC does is going to be put under the spotlight and is going to be questioned. And will be made to seem as if the AC is doing something to favor probably the NDC. Well, Why are you being so critical of the of the electoral commission? This is not the first time a position party is being that critical. Uh, on the on the, I think on the eighth of May two thousand and eight in Cape Coast, mm. the then candidate Professor Mills had the cause to warn the whole nation that the voter register is bloated in the Shanty region by seven hundred and sixty eight thousand people, and he downloaded it down to a Jusu Jabin constituency, saying that it's over about eighty six thousand. And if the EC does not do anything about it, he will find it difficult to accept the the, the, the results of the elections, and that Ghana may be like Kenya. We were warned. He was in opposition then, but I'm not saying. Is a tit for tat issue. No, we are. So, so he threatened. He threatened to. Uh, he threatened the EC in other words, yeah. and then he won. So you are threatening the EC, and you think that's going to help the fortunes of the MPP? No. What is what what is going to help is that uh, it's going to put the EC on its toes, so that it does what is right, in the sight of God and in the minds of the people of Ghana. We are putting the EC 
on, 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 on alerts that we are red alert also. We are watching, everybody is watching. And indeed, this question of the EC, doubting the EC and all those things, we were not the first to have put it out there. Mm. People, people erroneously think we went to court, um, um, Supreme Court, on the verdict because uh, 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 we, had, we had cause to complain. The PPP is on record. The PPP, Per Parkway Syndrome, had done the first challenge. He had written to the uh, Electoral Commission complaining bitterly about the voter register too, about more practices in the elections and to the effect that his party has been cheated on the polls. Parkway he did that. Mm. And it was on record again that other political parties, PNC and uh, others, have also expressed similar sentiments. The CPP have done so. So generally, we are wanting to have a clean, fair elections where there will be no doubt, where there will be no, uh, there will be little or no doubt about okay. the declaration of the results. Okay. We are preparing towards elections, and we want a clean elections. We want a clean playing field where everybody will be happy. So at the end of the day, whoever is declared, we can all uh, rejoice and move uh, uh, along. Okay, we'll, we'll still be talking about some issues relating to elections because you don't know that uh, Aban Bagbin has also been passing some comments to suggest that uh, indeed uh, His Excellency John Drummond Imama is going to win this year's elections. He's going to win a one touch anyway. I don't know what you make of that, but we'll be delving into that plus a lot more issues right after this break. You're still watching AM Talk on the AM Show here on your Join News Channel on Multi TV. And joining in the discussion now is Member of Parliament for North Die Constituency, George Lowe, who happens also to be Deputy Ranking Member of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Committee, as well as the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament. Mr. Lowe, uh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm okay. actually Chairman. Uh, I'm actually Vice Chairman. Vice Chairman. You know, it's chaired by the majority. The okay. Constitutional Legal is chaired by the majority. Okay. It is when the minority chair, uh, mm. chairs uh, uh, um, a committee that you have uh, ranking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. All right. Thank you. So uh, we, we've been having a lot of discussions, particularly about the 2016 elections. Uh, a statement purported to have come from the MPP's director of elections suggesting that the MPP was going to declare the results on November 7. And, uh, well, Mr. Kokofu has disputed that claim, suggesting that uh, his that of elections did not necessarily say that. But what are, what are your thoughts on that and how the Electoral Commission has handled things up until now leading to the November polls? <laughs> Thank you very much and let me say good morning to our cherished viewers. Mm. Um, the NPP and declaration of results, uh, I, I don't see how at all they are able to do that. I, I, I think clearly that uh, the constitution and the laws of Ghana, it's clear that the only person who can declare the results is the returning officer, mm -hmm. the national returning officer of the elections, who happens to be the commissioner of the electoral commission. So basically, if somebody sits somewhere, uh, put up a microphone or something and says he's declaring results, he's just tickling himself. So you think it's just chief laughing. political talk? I mean, yes. I mean, I don't, I don't, the constitution is clear who should declare who the president of Ghana is. Is that not to suggest that the party is probably conscious of the things that happened or that have happened previously and is now putting up the needed mechanisms to ensure that no such thing happens? I mean, the MPP has for a long time. Uh, contested a lot of the election results, particularly for 2012, to a point where we had to go to court for almost a year. But the MPP has contested electoral results uh, except when they have won it. So really, what is the big deal? If you go back from 90, uh, the 93 uh, results throughout, any time we had a, uh, an election and the MPP lost, they contested the results. But when they won, they didn't contest the results. Has that not been the same? It, it, no, but it, 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 then it begins to suggest that results must be one way in this country. Only the MPP must win uh, elections, which it cannot be the case. So, so really, it is nothing strange. And this is not the first time that they, you know, in 2004, they declared, uh, they purported to have declared the results. Mm. You, you know, uh, uh, Jake, Jake, 
Obeje Bilam, they got, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, of birthday memory. So, really, it's nothing new. But I'm saying that the constitution is clear who should declare results in Ghana. And it's the national returning officer who happens to be the commissioner of the Electoral Commission of Ghana. So, if they choose to hide somewhere and say they are declaring some results. Well, I, I don't see what they are talking about. They, it's only be a, a panacea for chaos. And, and I think that we are all united, we should all be united and tell them in their face that this election should not be about creating chaos. It should be about free, fair, uh, transparent elections, where when you lose, you've lost. When you win, you won. And the only person who can determine that is the Electoral Commission. Well, we've also been uh, speaking a lot about the Electoral Commission itself, its role uh, ahead of the elections and during and after as well. And the MPP seems to be of the opinion that the Electoral Commission is deliberately doing things to sabotage the fortunes of their party, uh, probably to your benefit. Well, I don't know how many people work at the Electoral Commission. I don't know how many commissioners they have. Just oppose that with about 10 million, 12 million Ghanaians who are going to oppose. I don't see how the Electoral Commission, Qualetra Commission, can say that they will disregard the votes of all the people who go to the polls. That is one. Two, the Electoral Commission has been conducting elections in this country all these years. We, as a human institution, we may not like every single thing that they did or they do, but that is the Electoral Commission. And they, they continue to do the things that they believe, they understand, that they must do according to law, according to legal aid and processes. For instance, if the Electoral Commission says that we do not need a new voters register, for which reason they bring in stakeholders who also agree that indeed we do not need a, 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 a new register. Where have they gone wrong? I, I, I think that we must be fair to that institution. But some would say in the interest of having credible elections, elections, results of an election that cannot be contested, if we had a clean register, or if indeed we had uh, a new register, I mean, there'll be no cause for alarm. No party can then, after losing, come out and say, you know what, I lost because the numbers here were much more than they really are, or this or that. I disagree entirely with that assertion. Mm -hmm. You know why? In 2012, not only did we have a new register, we had biometric registration for the first time in this country. At great cost to the taxpayer. That process that says that you come here, put your finger here, your picture pops up, oh, it is you, your name is ticked. Even that one they disagree with. So what else would satisfy them? What else would satisfy them? So the thing is much ado about nothing? There's much ado about, I mean, what difference will it make if we went for a, 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 a new vote? Uh, uh, vote oh, no, what, what difference would it make? Yes, uh, I had my, my senior colleague talking about, uh, he's talking about no, no, verification, no verification, no vote. No vote. Was it the case? In some instances, yes. Yes, in some instances. The people were made to vote without the verification process. So that alone makes it fundamentally flawed. The law says no verification, no vote. Some people, me sitting in Bantama, making sure people are verified before they vote. Then another people, another set of constituency will have their way. Verification or no verification. The president himself goes out there to tell the whole nation that you can vote without even verification. Flouting the law with impedance. And the, we are sitting here... But, but the exception was for areas or places where the please, DVDs were not working. Please, but, please, don't let us go there. No, but, the but law, even please, that one is not please, entirely please, I'm, 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 But I'll, I'll come back. What he said, the quoting law, the president is not entirely The law correct. was so explicit. Mm. No verification, no vote. So under no circumstances should we allow the circumvention of the law to appear. But that would be disenfranchising people. Well, of course, that is, that is what the law says. The framers of the law knew that machines are machines. It can, at any point in time, disappoint. That is it. And that's the price you pay for putting up laws and regulations to ensuring uh, fairness and openness. Mm -hmm. But you do not clean some people's hands at the, at the back and then 
uh, on the same uh, uh, lane, uh, you, you allow others free hand. But, but, but again, I, I might have to agree with George Law on this. The president did not categorically say you can go ahead and vote without verification. What did he say then? He did make an appeal to uh -huh. the Electoral Commission to yeah. consider persons yeah. who uh, could not be verified by the machines, if uh -huh. I'm right. That's what he said. Uh, the president yes. says uh -huh. that looking at the circumstances, yes. exactly. finance, okay. he was appealing. Uh -huh. If it's possible, people True. should be allowed. Yeah. Good. That, that's so so that, he made that an appeal. He, he, made one, a, he made an appeal he made and one, the appeal was upheld. No, he made one, one, he makes one mm. fundamental uh, statement that is very flawed. Mm. You see, you may have laws, but none of the laws that we enact, even in parliament or anywhere, supersedes the constitutional point. Good. So at that point, at that who, point who interpreted is, that constitutional please, provision At that there? point, at that point, you the, should have gone no, to Supreme please, Court please. then. Yes, the Supreme because Court. Because the president need, is not law. You didn't the president need, is not Supreme listen. Court to uh, uh, interpret the law. Brother, you the didn't contradiction need, in the law. You didn't law. need to go to the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah. Is that so? Had already, had already ruled on that in 2000. Is that so? In 2000, you remember that? So it was a fundamental flaw. The elections was premised on flaw. Let's not do that. I'm saying that in 2000, you remember the ID card matter, mm -hmm. where you went to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said that you cannot use processes to disenfranchise. Mm -hmm. So people who did not have colored ID cards should be allowed to vote. It amounts to the same thing. And that was the Supreme Court speaking. Yes, that was the Supreme Court speaking. And the other and the time, Court it was the president appealing. No, the Supreme Court cannot speak every time there's a problem. Why? They are spoken they, once, they and are, that is precedent. Oh, please. That's president. And who, who carries that one? Is I'm the president the president? Is the president the commissioner? But the president didn't pretend he was. Yeah, he did so. No. And he appealed in his capacity as a president. He no, no, forgot no, no, no. he was a Honorable, candidate. But, 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 so but, but, so but suppose Nana had gone out there and made that appeal. What right. would have happened? Well, what, suppose what, any what of the presidential contestants have, have gone out there to make what the would appeal. Have what would have happened? Appeals are appeals. Oh, please. No, no, oh, appeals please. are not law. Don't, the don't let us be kidding The here. president didn't no. uh, enact a law. No, mm. don't let us be kidding No, here. it's not about kidding, but so, it's about the practical implementation. So, 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 uh, exercise their franchise, but for one reason or the other, through no fault of theirs anyway, they couldn't exercise their franchise. What Good. would have been the option? Good. The option would have been simple. You were not verified, so you can vote. The law was so... Dr. Aparijan was on TV, radio and everywhere, and he said, no verification, no vote. It's so simple. Simplicita. So in a similar... Should a similar situation like that happen this time round, what is to happen? I think the law has taken... Seeing the stand the MPP has taken over I think, the past few I months. I think the, uh, that, that um, uh, mischief is being cured by enactment of allies and mm. all that. Now, um, um, I think the IPAC, they are agreeing that they will have other means of verification other than the machine itself. You understand, you understand my point. For instance, mm. um, and it happened at the Supreme Court there. You all saw <coughs> what happened. So now, what... I'm getting is that yes, of course, uh, people can uh, use the manual uh, uh, verification. Mm. People can um, uh, testify to that. If that becomes the rule, it becomes so. It becomes then everybody is clear. Okay, everybody is clear. So, but, mind. but still speaking on on elections, just before we wrap up, uh, we do know Alban Bagbin has been a critic of <laughs> this government and indeed the president, but. Uh, it's suggested for many that, uh, well, it means it's spelling doom for the NDC ahead of the elections. But he has come back to say that he believes uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama can and will win the elections. And in fact, he's going to win by a one touch victory. <laughs> Does that come to you as a surprise? Oh, not at all. Mm. Um, you believe he's going to win? He's a very respected uh, 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 politician mm. and a legislator. He's, he's the leader of the House. Mm. And. Yes. Okay. Uh, he was critic of the government okay. and the president, and it nearly cost him his seat. I see. Yeah, he went through hell for the primaries. They nearly, have to do this in 30 seconds. They really. nearly got him out. So it, it's a, a lesson well learned. So you think he's been bullied to, to exactly do this? to He has been whipped in line, and in any case, he can't, he can't, he can't do otherwise because here is a case um, uh, having gone through that um, uh, sketchy. Uh, uh, experience. You cannot fight the, fight the system okay. any longer. Uh, Honorable so, Judge Lowe, your thoughts on that as yeah. well? Well, Honorable, I mean, 
cannot be described as a fierce critic of the president. Mm. What he did as a, as a senior member of the party was to point out things that were, he thought could have been done better by the president. And by his own assertion, His Excellency took those things in good faith. Mm. And he thinks that and the party was the better for it. As for whether he was uh, whipped, in line? whipped in line or not, I, I mean, I don't see where the evidence is. Mm. I think that okay. we all went to primary. Some of right. us lost, some of people won, and he won. He's still the leader of the house. Okay. They could have, the president could have withdrawn him as leader of the house, mm. could have punished him in any other way. He didn't. He didn't. Okay. So it tells you that there was no b no. bad blood. Right. Uh, that he has come out and he has done his analysis. Mm. And this is not the first time I have been with him. Uh, on several occasions where he has assured me that we're going to win one time. Ah, so okay. this is consistent. Member of Parliament for been. North mm -hmm. Dai constituency, Honorable George Lowe. Uh, you just heard him uh, speak on those issues here on AM Talk. Also uh, with us in studio was uh, Member of Parliament for Kukuf, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, for Bantama, uh, <laughs> Honorable Kwabna Kokofu. He also joined us in studio for AM Talk. James, my many thanks for your time on AM Talk this morning. You're still watching the AM Show here on your joining channel on Multi TV. AM Talk was proudly brought to you in association with Diamond Diagnosis Center. Time now for some entertainment here on the AM Show.